Correct these sentences. Isaac broke the window, but it was an accident. He paid to have it fixed. Okay, so here's what we need to do. First of all, we need to capitalize Isaac, of course. First word in the sentence, and it's a pro proper noun, somebody's name. Isaac broke the window. That's an irregular verb, so you don't need the ED ending. He broke the window. Now, we have two sentences that have been combined. So we need a comma here. He broke the window. We've got a, we have a conjunction right here, right there. That tells us we need a comma before. That's combining two sentences. Okay, so Isaac broke the window, but it was an accident. We need a period right here. That's the end of that sentence. Now, this word right here, A, we got to get rid of that. We know we have to change that to and because look at the next word, guys. It starts with a vowel. So that needs to be and instead of A. Okay. Now, this is where it gets funny. We don't see this very often. Isaac broke the window, but it was an accident, period. Then we're going to start a new sentence here. He paid to have it fixed, period. Okay. Let's go to number two. The teams can begun to play once the referee's whistle is blowed. Uh, no, we've got a kind of, all kinds of problems here. So let's capitalize the first word in the sentence, of course. The teams can begin. Let me just cross that off, and then I will type it in correctly. So you should have put begin. They can begin to play once the referee's whistle is blown. I'm going to cross that off. That's one of those irregular verbs, too, so we don't just blown, okay? And I'm going to put a period at the end, so I don't forget that. Okay, <clears throat> the teams can begin to play once the referee's whistle is blown. Please make sure. Guys, we have a possessive noun. Whose whistle is it? It's the referee's whistle. Therefore, because it's the referee's whistle, we have to have an apostrophe right here. That's supposed to be after the E, by the way. Let me fix that. We have to have an apostrophe right after the E before that S. That's the referee's whistle. Okay. Let's go to number three. Use context clues to determine the meaning of the bolded word. That's a very fancy way of saying, what in the world does this big word mean? Well, you're going to come across words all the time. You don't know what they mean. But if you read the sentences around them, typically you can figure it out. And there's usually some uh, key words that can help you clue you into what these words mean. So they were arrested for perpetrating a crime at the 7-Eleven on the corner. Uh, well, I will say this. There are two words that tell me what perpetrating means. Arrested and crime. Those two words helped me out immensely. They were arrested, arrested for perpetrating a crime. So perpetrating in my mind means committing. So I would say perpetrating means for they were arrested for committing a crime. So let me type that in. Committing a crime. And I didn't spell that right. Committing. Two T's there? Boy, that looks weird. But evidently that's how you spell it. I'll have to look that up again. Tell me if I'm wrong there. They were arrested for committing a crime at the 7 on the corner. That's what perpetrating means. Okay. Write the root word or base word for plentiful. All right, let me type this in. So the root word, the main word for plentiful is plenty. Because the suffix, it has a suffix here. Full is a suffix. It's a suffix that you attach to the end of the word. So plenty is the root word. Okay, so what is the root or base word for misfortune? Uh, that is fortune. Be prefix is miss. They've attached that to the word fortune to make it mean the opposite. Okay, 